Ah, a new toy. Well, an old toy. So a pretty cool resale shop find is an old um, sprinkler. And I know they have new versions of these. I've seen the plastic ones, but this one is all cast iron and pretty neat. So I will, uh, I think I'm gonna refurbish this and do a video on it. It does kind of work, but it needs some, some, some updating. So um, looking forward to that video. Pretty neat uh, mechanics in here how this works and moves forward as it as it turns so the greenhouse all the struggles getting this thing set up this winter starting seedlings in here and the learning curve of just how to use the greenhouse but what are, what is this thing for what are the plans so not much has changed since probably the last time you had seen the greenhouse we uh did the, the wood chip flooring in here, and that's worked pretty good. We There's a few blades of grass popping up and some of these little picker bush things here and there, but uh, we'll kill that stuff off once we get in here and start working around. Uh, we've got all of our maple syrup stuff still sitting where we left it. All the taps and tubing and the old evaporator. But what are we gonna use this for? What's the point of having this hoop house and what are our plans for it? So a lot of people talked about uh, when I was building it why didn't I you know put a roll-up wall on the sides and why didn't I leave the doors and, and ends more open and all that good stuff that's one of the things I, I never understood with greenhouses is I don't understand the purpose of using the greenhouse throughout the summertime uh, then you have to just you have to bring in water because you're under plastic so you're not going to get water in here so you have to water everything the temperatures are pretty high so things are going to dry out quicker so again you have to water more um, and you have to provide some type of ventilation nor normally uh, to keep the temperatures down in here so rather than do all that and use this structure during the summertime we have decided to just about solely use it throughout the fall winter and spring and during the summertime it will pretty much sit dormant it's kind of a storage uh, place for us uh, and you know a place for us to have a lot of our gardening things but uh, we grow outside in the summertime uh, we have lots of place and area to do that and our outdoor gardens uh, do very well love coming out here on uh, cloudy rainy days because it's cool uh, in the greenhouse or at least not as hot it might only be maybe in the 90s or maybe a little over 100 in here um, come out here on a sunny day and I, it can get uh, upwards of 120 degrees in the greenhouse um, that's without the fans running or anything like that which I don't run because we're not using it right now so we built this greenhouse in February, January and February of this year. Built it in the wintertime. Lots of struggles if you haven't seen that. Uh, interesting series to follow along. I'll link up in the, in the corner there for you guys to check out. Uh, had some trouble with it. It collapsed on us. Um, so I had to do some strengthening and put this, uh, this beam up and some other things. Then we had some huge windstorms come through in March and April. And I didn't do a video at the time, but I put up these, um, these supports on that, middle, on that middle beam right here because... This thing was blown. I mean, we had 50, 60, even 65. It may have been 70 mile gusts. It was so windy. This thing was just folding over. I mean, the you know the wind would come through here and the beam was going back and forth, and it was just really, really uh, uh, hard on this thing. But it survived. Nothing broke. Nothing fell down. Not, no problems with it at all. Um, again, I did put the brace up there. I don't think it was necessary, but it made me feel better. So one of the things that's been helping me uh, kind of identify the temperature zone and range in here uh, during the day and at night, and I'll, this will be coming really handy, especially getting into the fall in the spring, is this little uh, thermometer and humidity meter here. Um, company sent this to me to, to try it out. I've been using it in here for about a week, and uh, it's been working pretty good. So the nice thing about this is it shows current temperature, so it's actually cool in here. It's a little cloudy, which is nice. Um, the max today earlier was 117 degrees and the minimum temperature during the day today was 85. Um, now this, as far as I can tell, it says it's supposed to record the lowest temperature in the past 24 hours, but as far as I can tell, it's just a 12 hour range. So uh, when I came out here this morning, it showed what my lowest temperature was overnight and then what the highest temperature was yesterday um, during the day. So um, the min and max is, is pretty useful. It also shows humidity, which I'm not as concerned about. It's about 47% in here. Um, during the nighttime, I noticed when I came out here in the morning, it was really low, it was pretty dry. 
um, shows the minimum you know humidity was 20 percent last night or or early this morning so um, this is pretty cool though it has has a time regular clock on it and some alarms and things I'm not sure what the alarms would be useful for out here but uh, um, definitely this is a uh, uh, pretty neat little device and super cheap so um, if you're interested in something like that of course we'll put a link in the description and you can check that out uh, over on Amazon so starting coming up here in the late summer, um, so probably end of August to early September, I'm going to be building a raised bed in here. I may use some dimensional lumber or pallet wood, whatever I can scrape up, uh, but I'm have a, a raised bed. It'll be about uh, four feet wide in here, and it's going to go right down the center of the greenhouse, so four feet wide all the way down. And I'm going to probably use some of this wood to uh, support from the beams down to the edges of the raised bed, which will help support each of these posts, um, as well as the raised bed itself. That'll be filled with our patented uh, special um, super raised bed soil mixture, and uh, that's we've had really good luck with. And so this whole area here will give us quite a bit of, of growing space. That'll also allow us to um, trellis things up to the beam in the middle here, you know, tomatoes and peas and pole beans and whatever else we wanna do. So we're going to be focusing on cool weather crops. So we're going to be using, you know, doing peas and lettuces and, and uh, probably some beans and some other things like that. But I'm also going to try to overwinter some tomatoes and some peppers and things like that. Some indeterminate uh, varieties of things that I can just keep growing, cut them down, they'll grow back up and, uh, you know, just keep them, keep them going in here for as long as I kind of want to experiment with that. Um, and uh, some root crops and stuff like that as well, of course, like radishes and carrots and, and other things. So I'd like to be able to produce food throughout the wintertime for our own consumption. Um, and then it will come into maple syrup season, which starts you know, about February, usually late February, uh, mid-February, somewhere around there. Now, this is where we had the maple syrup evaporator. This is the DIY cinder block evaporator. Um, speakers not included. Uh, this is where we did all of our maple syrup. Uh, boiled, uh, what was it, almost a thousand gallons of sap through here uh, this year and uh, had really great success with this particular design. Loved it, worked very well. However, um, I might try to move it out of the greenhouse um, and into a new building which I may build off the end of the greenhouse here. And this is where all the noise is coming from. So I recently came across more pallets. Now these are not your very good wood, uh, like I normally look for the oak pallets, the older ones. These are all pine. Um, however, they are of like two or three varieties of sizes. So I have stacks of all the same exact size pallets. You can see these ones are marked with green. There's some that are uh, marked with red, and I think there was some purple ones around here too. Uh, and they're all the same exact size. So what my plan was, I'm gonna try to build a completely 100% pallet building, basically a regular uh, square rectangular sized uh, building over here, shaped building with a peaked roof that will come up just above the greenhouse. And in there, I'm gonna put my wood boiler to heat the greenhouse as well as my maple syrup evaporator. So I'll take some of this wall apart, and we'll put a door in there, I'll move this chimney, move the evaporator out of there. And so um, this will be kind of the heating area. I'll be able to store wood right out here and design it all around heating and burning wood for the uh, for both the maple syrup operation and for heating the greenhouse. So um, that's the plan down here. So it will be nice to have the evaporator in its own kind of building uh, where I can maybe close it off from the greenhouse. Uh, because man does this thing produce a lot of steam and I need to vent that out of the greenhouse consistently or constantly during you know while I'm evaporating which then I'm bringing in cold air and cooling the greenhouse down so that kind of works against uh, what I want to do. The humidity is nice but uh, can't get that steam out of here without bringing in a lot of cold air. So I'm going to try to separate that out of the greenhouse so I, if I have things growing in here that won't be an issue. So I'm going to be using a lot of those pallets also to build tables that will run all the way down the side of the uh, greenhouse here. And so that'll leave about a four foot walkway between the pallets and the edge of the raised bed. Um, that will be a path all the way down. And then what I'm going to be doing on the south side, so the south side of the greenhouse here, is where I'll be putting another row of tables all the way down the side. And there'll be 55 gallon drums staged underneath this. And that wood burning, that wood boiler will be uh, piped into that um, and it will heat the water. And uh, the sun will be painted black, so the sun will heat them during the day. And then that radiant heat is what will keep this above temperature uh, during the nighttime hours. So that's the plan. We'll see how good that works.
I can't wait to get that wood boiler out here. Uh, if you followed along, I'm kind of giving up on using our outdoor wood, bo uh, wood burner, wood boiler to heat our home. And I'm going to be dragging that out here to the greenhouse. Um, it's going to be a lot more efficient out here. It's going to be a lot less wood uh, and I'll be able to use it to heat water. So uh, a lot of things I could do with that. I can create uh, a lot of tables out here that have maybe some coils of piping ru uh, routed underneath it that the tables can be warmed. Uh, then I can use that to start sealing. So. After I'm done with my evaporation season, my maple syrup season, uh, I'll be st at the same time, I guess, and, and as I'm finishing up with that, I'm going to be starting our seedlings. So um, we started our little seedling business last year, which was a, a fledgling uh, operation. <laughs> uh, we sold uh, a few flats of uh, various things, but um, gave a lot of things away and, and, and planted a lot. But uh, next year I want to go big. So uh, I'm going to fill these tables up out here. We're going to start a bunch of seedlings. We're going to start flowers. We're going to start everything way ahead of time. Uh, I'm going to start things January, February, March, uh, and just get things growing up real nice and healthy in here. And then I'm going to be selling things. I may invite people to come back to the greenhouse to, to shop in here. And of course, we're going to get a great jump start on our own gardening season. So we'll be able to sell more produce. So really take advantage of the investment we've made. Um, this greenhouse has been awesome so far just for the multi-purpose uses that we've had for it. Um, not a lot in the summer, but in the springtime. And so I'm looking forward to fall to uh, get back out here and uh, start to use this space again. So sometimes I like to take you guys along on, on the planning and the thoughts because uh, you guys have been a huge asset to me uh, and you guys kind of steer some of these projects uh, you know, on this channel. So it's, this isn't just me uh, telling you guys what's going on. This is me putting my plans out there so that you guys can comment and uh, throw your ideas out there because uh, there are a hundred thousand of you almost out there who can come up with some pretty awesome ideas for things and so uh, I always appreciate that so tell me what you think throw your ideas down below uh, if you have experience in this kind of thing and there's something that we should look out for uh, with any of the things I talked about uh, let us know we uh, we always read the comments and listen thumbs up on the video if you're uh, if you like these kind of things you like the, the planning sessions I know it's a lot of talking but uh, it's, uh, it, it's kind of fun for me to share with you guys and, and hear what you guys think before I start to dig into all these things here coming up in the next month or so. So look forward to a lot of greenhouse videos and, and, and uh, fall gardening and growing and things coming up. Uh, updates on the corn patches and the pumpkin patch and, and everything else, the gardens and things like that will be coming soon as well. Subscribe if you want to follow along, guys, and, and be with us for this journey from the suburban homestead to this 25-acre uh, small hobby farm. And uh, are we going to make it? Can we sustain ourselves off this land? Can we provide an income for ourselves off this land so I don't have to get an outside job? Uh, tag along. We'd love to have you and, uh, and see how this all turns out for us. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.